Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm certainly very excited about form factors. So I'll be talking about EDSFF today. Uh, we've been talking about EDSFF at OCP Summit and other forums for a number of years. So many of you are already familiar. But I have to give the quick pitch for why EDSFF. And then I want to talk about the main thing I came to talk about today, which is the challenges and opportunities of all the different EDSFF variants. So if you don't know, uh, EDSFF is a SNEA standard. And it's really the first time that the industry has moved to adopt, in a standard way, SSD form factors designed specifically for servers. Today, the industry is dominated by two form factors that started off in non-server applications. You have the M.2 form factor, which was optimized for notebook PCs, and U.2, which is a 2.5-inch form factor, which followed from 2.5-inch notebook hard disk drives and later 2.5-inch enterprise drives. So the quick pitch on why EDSFF compared to U.2 uh, are three main things, is capacity, signal integrity, and cooling. When I talk about capacity, it's not just about drive capacity. It's really about at the rack level, at the rack unit level. How much storage capacity can you fit in? And depending on the specific type of server you're using, EDSFF will allow up to twice the capacity per rack unit compared to U.2. The second major benefit to EDSFF is the signal integrity from the connector. And the connector benefits both in terms of crosstalk by having transmit and receive pins on opposite sides of the board, and also insertion loss, where there's an up to two decibel improvement by using the EDSFF connector. And that's really uh, helpful as we go to the faster versions of PCI Express that are quickly approaching. In terms of cooling, I won't go into it today, but I do invite you to join a separate session uh, that Solidime will be presenting tomorrow morning. We'll, we'll go all into this with our, our thermal architects. So you get a lot of great opportunity to, to hear about the ther thermal advantages of EDSFF there. So that's, that's great. EDSFF has these three advantages over U.2. Um, a lot of people say, OK, I'm, I'm sold. I want EDSFF. Um, but there's a problem. The problem is it's EDSFF is not one thing. It's actually several things. And at the high level, there's three different major form factors of EDSFF. You've got the E1L, which evolved from the ruler form factor. You've got the E1S, or short, that evolved from kind of M.2 and NF1 form factors. And then you've got the, the E3 version. So three major versions of EDSFF to choose from. Which one should you choose? Well, I like to look at market data and see how the market's evolving. So what you can see on the early years here in 2021, about 90% of the volume of SSDs in the data center was dominated by these two legacy form factors, M.2 and U.2. And over time, EDSFF is projected to take a bigger and bigger part of the market. And you'll see that U.2 is still a big part of the market, even in the out years, even in 2026. Uh, U.2 is, is still very prolific. But I, I group these in, in this color scheme so you can kind of see the evolution by market. And what you can see is that the dark green of the M.2 form factor is evolving into the light green of the E1S form factor. And that's driven by a lot of OCP systems and a lot of the companies represented here today uh, as they adopt EDSFF in the form of E1S. The other thing that's happening, and it's getting a little bit of a late start, but it's projected to have a big impact, is the transition from U.2 in the dark blue to E3 in the, in the light blue. And this is really being pioneered by a couple of major server and storage OEMs that have um, 
that have driven this. And I think this is, is really catching on. And then you also see, you know, E1S is, uh, E1, sorry, E1L is uh, growing and kind of stable over time and adding card form factor is, is small and, and getting smaller. So we're going from a very simple world of kind of two form factors dominating to a very fragmented world. Right? You still have M.2 out there, E1S, E3, U.2, E1L, add in card. How do you choose? Well, it's actually a little bit worse than that. You not only really have to choose between the three form factors, there's 11 different total variants of, of EDSFF to choose from. And so I get asked this a lot by, by smaller data center operators. Um, which of these specific ones should I choose? Um, even if I'm, I'm sold on a specific, you know, I'm sold on EDSFF, I'm sold on one of the three major variants, which one of the specific ones should I choose? And I've highlighted in purple the four versions that I see as having the most broad adoption. And that's defined by a large count of customers that are deploying or planning to deploy the form factor in production, and also a broad array of um, ecosystem offerings uh, from suppliers. So starting off with E1S, uh, the two big form factors, uh, I think 15 millimeter is really dominating in the OCP compute space. And you've got also the 9.5 millimeter version, which has a, a different but interesting application where it dominates lower performing applications at the edge or where density of storage is really predominant over performance density. And then you've got E1L, the, the dominant version there, if you're gonna use E1L, I would highly encourage you to use the 9.5 millimeter version. Um, this has some specialty um, applications in very large cloud data centers and also OEMs. And it's predominantly used in QLC JBOFs. And then finally looking at E3 at the bottom, the form factor that is evolving to dominate the market for NAND SSDs is the smallest version. It's the E3 short thin at 7.5 millimeters. And this is really being driven by OEM server adoption. But the other thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to get this exactly right. Uh, if you are designing a system backplane, there is some commonality that you can deploy. As long as you're in the same major category, you can, um, sometimes with some loss of efficiency, you can plug in different types of uh, variants into that same backplane. And so I, I encourage um, you to, to look at the major form factors that are being adopted, but also plan to the future and plan for contingencies about how you can um, take advantage of this flexibility. Um, this is a, stole, a slide I, I stole from SNEA, because it's such a, such a great slide talking about, about E3. Um, and as you can see, the E3 short thin has really been uh, targeted as primarily for NAND storage and servers. And it's exactly how I see the market playing out. But this is a, uh, the E3 spec and the work that was done in it on, uh, in OCP is really great in that there's really great scalability between the four different versions here with um, common dimensions that allow you to expand both in the length and also in the width. Another thing that I think is, is really interesting about E3 is the evolving interoperability with non-storage devices. Um, and I, I pulled out an example here of the, the OCP 3.0 NIC and the work that's been done um, to standardize some of the um, connectors between EDSFF and the OCP NIC. Uh, I was walking the show floor yesterday and I was actually saw a, um, a host bus adapter for SAS that was using the OCP NIC 3.0 form factor. And that really blew my mind. I'm I really excited by all the different things that people are coming up with to deploy. And it's turning the front of a server from just a storage bay to really more of a universal interconnect. So that's one of the great things E3 has going for it. So, uh, you know, in conclusion, I think we're moving into an era of 
faster interconnects with PCI Express. It's coming on us very quickly. Uh, EDSFF offers a lot of advantages for those systems. So if you're not looking at EDSFF yet, I encourage you to look at it. Is your, if you're not yet decided on which of the EDSFF variants to look at specifically, I encourage you to look at what are the major um, market adoption trends. And if it's, if it's all too risky, uh, U.2 remains a viable form factor for many years to come as there are just many, many systems that are, are relying on U.2 for older applications. Um, also check out the resources that are available to learn more. As I mentioned, we're going to be hosting a, another session tomorrow morning talking about thermal efficiency of system design with EDSFF. And while you're here at the summit, talk to, talk to your colleagues, talk to your peers about what they're doing for EDSFF adoption so you can understand where the rest of the community is and help us drive economies of scale in the industry. All right, thank you. So if somebody want to ask a question, you can come to this mic or that mic. Do we have a question? Okay, no questions. I think we can go to our next speaker then.